Straight ahead on our sizzling August edition of City Span, it's heavy on economic strength and poverty reduction and neighborhood revitalization. The park is open for business, a hub for the mind and body on Savannah's east side. We'll take you on a tour. He's sort of a legend on Savannah's west side. Everybody knows Bo. That's the late officer Lucius Levette, honored for his years of service to our area's youth and beyond. With summer's sizzle starting to fade, we'll check in on the success of the Summer 500, which was a chance for some interns to spread their wings. We'll celebrate at Rose Dew, an area steeped in tradition. From hazmat training to the green light on Price Street, CitySpan has you covered and it starts now. Hello Savannah and welcome to City Span, your source for news and information in and about the city of Savannah. I'm your host Ken Slats. We are going to start with a major facility from groundbreaking to a ribbon cutting, 360 days apart, culminating in the grand opening of the park. Three, two, one. Four. It was a sweet snip of the scissors that made it official, the opening of the Pennsylvania Avenue Resource Center. Nearly seven and a quarter million dollars to build, all from the penny tax, the special purpose local option sales tax, or SPLOST. This is what the doctor ordered. It's like having the doctor's office right here in your front yard. People can just walk up, uh, register, start using this facility, it's awesome. It's what the community needs. And you remember when we were growing up, they'd say, find a penny, pick it up, and all day long you'd have good luck? Well, I've got a new one. If somebody asks you what a penny can do, a penny can make a dream come true. A dream for many on Savannah's east side. The park is nearly 19,000 square feet. It's a facility for the mind and body. Exercise and, and weight rooms, this is what we all need more exercise and, and on a daily basis. And this is going to be great for our seniors. I think what, what makes it unique is that the city of Savannah is able to bring services to one location, almost as if it's one-stop shopping. We have uh, partnerships already underway for lecture series, lunch and learn series, workshops for adult education, for youth education, as well as helping our seniors to be more educated about what their rights are in the community as well. We want to make sure that you take advantage of wellness programs, exercise programs, arts and crafts, job training, housing, you name it, it's available in this facility. We already have a long list of partners and they haven't even seen the building yet. The city of Savannah is invested in making certain that our neighborhoods are a wonderful place to live and bringing the park to this part of town really opens it up for all of our community to have that higher level of quality of life. I'd like to note the garden is ADA accessible and serves as a testament of the pride community members have already have in this facility. The park is open Monday through Saturday. The hours vary. It's at 425 Pennsylvania Avenue across from Savannah High School. You do need to sign up to use the facility. It's free through the end of 2019. At that time, annual fees will be approved by council. For more information, either stop by or give them a call, 651-4211. Ladies and gentlemen, would you rise to your feet, those of you who can, and welcome the graduates of 2019 Summer 500. Come on, show some appreciation for them. It was a celebration at the Savannah Cultural Arts Center last month as participants and their families, right, community going, leaders, and business going. partners gathered for the close of another successful Summer 500 program. We wanted to provide an opportunity for all young people to be introduced to the world of work, the workforce. The ceremony included drawings for prizes, Name one way to be successful. A Summer 500 version of Family Feud and the presentation of diplomas. The cream of the crop always comes to the top. 
It's a, that's a saying they always say. It always comes to the top. Those that are willing to take the chance and those that are willing to do the job and those that are glad to be there. Well, this is our cream of the crop. The Summer 500 program provides Savannah youth age 16 and up with paid employment for up to eight weeks during the summer. You can get much more information at savannahga.gov slash summer500. In our next segment, we'll have more from the Summer 500. We'll check in with three young men working at the Savannah Hilton Head International Airport. They're featured in about five minutes. In three, two, one. That's the Price Street bike lane with a fresh coat of environmentally friendly and safety conscious green paint. It's a $243,000 project that was paid for out of the Mobility and Parking Services Fund. Price Street was just completed in the past month from Bay Street on the north all the way down to 41st Street. The paint should last for five to eight years, if not longer, requires little to no maintenance. Either street sweeping or pressure washing should get the job done. Bike lanes, in particular, when we start coloring them, putting up protective barriers, putting up protective striping, becomes more comfortable. And the more comfortable it becomes, the more people that use it. When this Price Street bike lane was first put in, motor vehicle crashes went down 30%. And I've heard from residents on the street that say that now they feel like they can be part of the community. We're making sure we got bike paths and we're working towards having a, a good riding, riding sitting long term run and ride is all, what it's all about, it, all right? We are on target to start this fall with our Wheaton and Liberty Street bike lane. Uh, we have, uh, as the mayor mentioned, uh, put money in the SPLOS list for the Tide to Town program, so we're finally moving forward. And Price Street follows Lincoln Street to be finished with the safety conscious green paint. Time for break, still to come, Juliet Gordon Lowe in the spotlight. It's a history lesson in our Hungry for History series. Plus, we officially open up a couple of parks, one on the south side and one on the west side, the latter after a local legend. But straight ahead, news on the groundbreaking for Savannah's much anticipated arena project. So stick with us for the latest on City Space. This the city that I love, let's try to keep it up. It's where we party every day, so through the week is up. And everybody having fun, nobody deep as us. We got our own style, but we just gotta clean it up. I love my home, down by the water. I told her that I'm a southern girl from down by the border. And ain't nothing changing about me. That's how Savannah raised me, history in the making. Everybody love me, it's amazing. This will we live. How about we take some pride in it, thrive in it. I'ma pull up and take a ride in it. And it's so easy to go put it in a basket. <laughs> this is my home, don't trash it. When you dial 911 for a structure fire here in Savannah, you will get at least 25 firefighters on your scene. It's a lot more than just putting out the fire and then going back to our station. We will stay there and make sure that the citizens are taken care of. Because we keep such a high level of training, the ability to adjust from one situation to another is extremely simple for us. Savannah Fire is an internationally accredited agency and is an ISO Class 1 department. Only 2% of all fire departments have achieved this prestigious level. Think you have what it takes to be one of the elite? For more information, savannahfire.org. Welcome back to City Span. We are closing in on one of the largest municipal projects the city has ever undertaken, the building of a brand new arena in the Canal District. Up until now, uh, again, for the past couple of years, we've done pretty extensive planning and design process. While there's no vertical construction above ground, um, there's tons of work that goes on every single day to make this a reality. Again, this will be one of the largest 
um, public uh, projects in Savannah's history. I think it'll be one of um, the, the best looking arenas in the nation for an arena of this size. Um, and I think it'll be a public facility that our citizens will be proud of. When it's the arena will anchor the Canal District. It's over by the intersection of Gwinnett and Stiles to the west of the downtown historic district. The arena itself is a $165 million project. While vertical construction won't take place until the start of next year, the city is set to break ground and start site work in the next month with the celebratory groundbreaking second week of September. The 13th is going to be uh, sort of a traditional groundbreaking on the site itself. Um, September 14th will be, we're calling it a community tailgate. Again, we're, we're, this is the beginning of football season. We know Savannah loves its pigskin. Um, so we'll have sort of a um, tailgate kind of theme. We'll, it'll be AstroTurf out there um, at the foot of the Waterworks building, which is um, sort of you know, part of the larger arena development. Um, this will be sort of basically the entryway into the arena itself. It'll be tented. We'll have some food, probably some barbecue, some refreshments. We'll have games, we'll have crafts. And also it'll be an opportunity for the public um, to provide uh, specific input with our consultants about what they want to see in the larger canal district. Also to begin soon is the sort of rebuild of Gwinnett Street by the arena site. It'll be raised and offer an entryway into the canal district. Now as we showed you earlier on CitySpan, around 200 high school students finished up the Summer 500 program, gaining invaluable job skills and a paycheck to boot. I learned pretty much like how to have a great work ethic. Michael Cross sums up the most popular belief for Summer 500 interns. He's one of eight who worked at the Savannah Hilton Head International Airport. Right now we do customer service really. CCS helping the elderly and disabled get around. Push carts, wheelchairs, help people out. Ask them do they need help. Um, walk them to their car. If they need an Uber. Uh, type of stuff like that. I do baggage every Monday and Wednesday, Friday with my fellow Summer 500 members. Each of which are thriving in the program, learning lessons that can be applied well beyond their work environment. Well, the first thing you need to know about people's skills is that you gotta know like these people are coming from all around the country, from, from New York, from Dallas, from Chicago, so you gotta ease them into Savannah, giving up Savannah hospitality. It's a win-win situation for us. Um, this is our busiest time of year. Uh, lots of vacation travelers, lots of extra flights, and it's just really busy. So it's perfect to bring on these kids who are you know, needing some experience in the real world as well as you know, something to do for the summer. Both Samuel and Michael were second year interns at the airport, returning before their senior seasons at Woodville Tompkins High School. Make me stay on top of my game, I guess. Uh, also helps me progress into other things in life, like like at home, and then just yeah, being a good person. It's something just to give them the drive to learn more and to want to keep working, and you know, try to find that place where you're going to fit in best and build a good future for yourself. Be looking out for the launch of the 2020 Summer 500 program sometime in the early spring. Are you hungry for some history? Well, then you're in luck. What began as an educational resource for city employees has become a successful community outreach program for those who want to learn more about Savannah's rich history. Municipal Archives Director Luciana Spraker has the details. So we started doing the Hungry for History monthly programs about 2014. Originally we started doing them for city employees. We wanted to share Savannah's unique history with our employees so they could learn more and appreciate the organization and community they work for and then share that with the citizens they interact with. And then we decided to open it up to the general public. Um, it was just became very popular. Um, we do it in person and we also share it online and on the Savannah government channel, SGTV. We use it as a way to explore lots of different facets of Savannah history, um, local community history, neighborhood history, art, architecture, um, development of the city, um, all sorts of different aspects of what makes Savannah special and unique. So as director of the Juliet Gordon Lowe Birthplace for the last four years, I've spent countless hours reading, 
thinking, talking about the life of Juliet Gordon Lowe. Last um, program that we just had was Lisa Junkin Lopez, the executive director of the Juliet Gordon Lowe Birthplace, and she discussed the life and legacy of Juliet Gordon Lowe and how they're using that to help um, inspire and direct them um, in their interpretation and um, direction of the birthplace today, and how they reach out to Girl Scouts in the community and reach their um, mission for that site. So lined up for the fall, our programming for the fall includes in September, we're going to have Elizabeth DuBose from Oswald Island Foundation speaking about Indigo. And then in October, we're actually going to, the Municipal Archives staff is going to present um, a program related to Archives Month. October is American Archives Month. So we haven't quite um, hammered out all the details, but it's, we're leaning towards tricks or treats related to the archives, so a little bit uh, fun for that. In November, we're going to be focusing on the South Side and Midtown communities and doing a little bit of architectural neighborhood history related to our South Side communities. And that's going to be Bob Susevich with Quattrofoil Consulting, um, who does a lot of um, neighborhood and community resource um, and cultural surveys. And so, you know, those are programs to look forward to. You can watch the most recent Hungry for History program on SGTV, Comcast Channel 8, or view it and past programs on our YouTube page. That's youtube.com slash city of Savannah. Just look for the Hungry for History playlist. Savannah has a brand new concert and special event venue available thanks in part to the Small Business Assistance Corporation. Leandria Michael has the details in this month's Small Business Spotlight. This month we're visiting Victory North, Savannah's coolest new event venue. Now this month you're getting a treat because you get to see behind the scenes before they open. But go check them out now at 2603 Whitaker Street. They have a really cool lineup of bands and shows that you don't want to miss. Victory North is uh, designed to provide a venue for uh, corporates, weddings, and concerts. It's a place uh, that we envision people would come in to have a good time and while either conducting business or celebrate or celebrating a special occasion. Uh, people can have a, an event on the ground floor in mezzanine only or they can have an event in the ground floor mezzanine and, and courtyard or they can have a very private small event on the third floor which can also accommodate small rehearsal dinners, uh, wine tastes, tastings, art galleries. Um, the, th this building was built in 1900, and what we wanted to do, we wanted to keep the aesthetics, the old aesthetics of the building, but yet make it a state of the art. So while we kept the bones of the building, the inside, the infrastructure is all state of the art, all modern, 2020, I would say. Tell us about your experience with SBAC. Uh, it was a very good experience. It helped me uh, uh, obtain the funding for this project. Um, it worked through all the difficult uh, uh, little aspects of uh, having to go to get uh, approved for funding. So Wendy Jeffers was very, very helpful. And um, what advice do you have for other business owners? If a business owner has an idea for a project, the first thing I advise them to do is to have a really well put together business plan with financial forecast. Figure out exactly what you want to do, figure out the budget, and give yourself a little bit of a margin over the budget because projects always exceed what the budget amount is. They're always hidden surprises. So just be ready. So if you need funding for your small business, SBAC can help make your dream a reality. Visit them at 111 East Liberty Street or check them out online, sbacsav.com. I'm Leandro Michael and this is your SBAC Small Business Spotlight. Thank you very much, Leandria. Much appreciated. Time for one more break. Still to come, Savannah Fire Rescue's Hazmat Division partnering up with other agencies for a hazmat response drill. We'll take you to the shore of the river. Plus two parks opening up, Rose Dew and Lucius Levette. Front row seats for Bolt straight ahead on City When debris clogs our storm drains, your area can flood. You can help stop it. It may seem obvious, 
but please don't put debris down the storm drain. This includes lawn clippings, leaves, litter, and you. Yeah, you, with the construction debris. What do you think will happen when that hardens? You've sealed your storm drain shut. Be smart and keep your property from flooding. Only rain down the drain. Your storm drain is not a trash can. Thanks. This the city that I love, let's try to keep it up. It's where we party every day, so through the week is up. And everybody having fun, nobody deep is us. We got our own style, but we just gotta clean it up. I love my home, down by the water. I told her that I'm a southern girl from down by the border. And ain't nothing changing about me. That's how Savannah raised me, history in the making. Everybody love me, it's amazing. This where we live, how about we take some pride in it, thrive in it. I'ma pull up and take a ride in it. And it's so easy to go put it in a basket. This is my home, don't trash it. That's the Coastal Georgia Center. It's the new home for several city departments, many of which you may need to utilize for service. Now the building is off of Falm Street on Savannah's west side. It houses utility services, business taxes and licensing, property taxes, alcohol licensing, general cashiering. Now many of these services used to be in the Broughton Municipal Building. There's plenty of parking. That's just to the east of the Coastal Georgia Center in the visitor's lot. Now, if you have any questions whatsoever, just call on over there, 651-6460. We certainly enjoy bringing you all the stories of neighborhood revitalization, a major ingredient in Savannah Forward. And this one is extra special. Not long ago, we held the ribbon cutting for a park in Cloverdale. Now it has an official name, a very special one at that. This is a wonderful way to memorialize those hours that my dad gave to this community to shape the present day and to shape the future. School superintendent, Dr. Ann Levett spoke on behalf of her family, each member gleaming with pride of what their father accomplished, both as a star athlete at Beach High School, where he was inducted into its Hall of Fame, and as a coach and mentor on Savannah's West Side. Coach Levette left a powerful legacy on Savannah's West Side, a major supporter of youth sports who shared that passion with many of us. It's only fitting that this community park, this sacred space behind us and around us, bears his name. We have an opportunity in this in this community to do great things because of people that came before us and gave us the opportunity to do great things. So we're excited about being here. We're proud of the legacy that he left behind. We're proud of Ms. Ann. His mission in life was to make sure that young people had something positive to do and that all of them felt the value of love and unconditional caring. And so he gave his life to that work. And we are so proud that wherever we are in this city, someone will say, I used to play for your father. I used to play against your father. Coach Levette was a longtime Savannah policeman. He founded the Police Athletic League, even guiding one of his basketball teams to a national title in 1968. He later went on to work as an equipment manager with the Harlem Globetrotters, traveling worldwide but it will be his legacy for his most local accomplishments right here in Savannah, in the Cloverdale neighborhood. Young people will come here, they will play here, that did not know who Bo Levette is, but they will have the opportunity from here and these directional signs to ask the question, who was Bo Levette? And somehow I'll be able to answer an affirmative, he's a person that created shade under which you play under today. So to Coach Bo, who I know is looking down, thank you for the shade. We look forward to many hours in this same space with certainly a renewed interest and a constant reminder of the, the number of hours and days and people who really sweated a lot on this field. Let's head south now to the shores of the Little Ogeechee River. Coffee Bluff Marina is truly one of Savannah's hidden gems. 
three, two, one. This site that we're on was going to be everything from, except for what it is today. It was going to be 42 condominiums. It was going to be 12 houses, six houses, four houses and a marina nestled in the middle. It was everything what it shouldn't be. Today, it's, it becomes everything of what it should be. Which consists of a park appropriately named Rose Dew, a plantation deep in history dating back to the 1830s, detailed in the fully laid out town by Dr. L.A. Falligant in 1837. Dr. Falligant's name is etched outside the new pavilion. <laughs> to imagine that there was a town laid out and a, a man 132 years ago that we're going to honor here in just a minute had the vision to lay out what would become this park that we're in is something extraordinary when you think about it. The park, pavilion, observation pier, and marina are all part of the overall Coffee Bluff project, all funded through the Special Purpose Local Option Sales Tax, or SPLOST. It's important for folks to realize that a penny makes a huge difference because this is six and a half million dollars of pennies that built and made this open access available to folks uh, in, in the city of Savannah. So I'm very proud of that. Shifting gears to public safety, Savannah Fire Rescue's Marine One and Hazmat Divisions led a multi-agency exercise along the Savannah River. It was all part of a three-day port security exercise. We have one of the premier hazmat teams in this region. Uh, we are also a state uh, type one hazmat team, which means we can be called anywhere within the state to perform these, these hazmat functions. This time we had a container to actually use with the boat but we do these scenarios, we practice all the time for situations just like this. Prior to our hazmat team making entry down here, we want to protect River Street area and the surrounding community from these combustible gases getting to their location and causing problems. The exercise was staged to refine the multi-agency response to the potential for hazardous materials in the shipping container. So Marine One being an all hazards vessel is doing what we call vapor dispersion. They are creating a water foam, a water mist. It's injecting more oxygen, it's lowering down the concentration and making it safe for the environment. In this exercise, we had about 25 different agencies, federal, state, local, also a lot of private industry partners. So it's very important to, again, it's a, it's a team effort. So it's important to bring all those different groups together because each group brings a different capability, as you saw with, with Marine One. Receive, let me know when you stop the leak. Operations received, operations to Marine One. It stopped vapor, vapor suppression. Uh, Georgia Ports is one of the largest container ports in the United States. We are their front line of defense. We are the ones that will respond to calls on this waterway, calls to Georgia Ports for hazardous material situations, calls for shipboard fires. Uh, we are the front line for that. Each agency has different unique uh, authorities, jurisdictions, capabilities to bring to those efforts. So to be able to work together is, is absolutely critical to achieving positive outcome. And thank you to all the other organizations that partnered up with the city of Savannah. Boy, time flies when you're having fun. We're out of it. You can always catch the latest news, information, and entertainment in and about the city of Savannah right here on SGTV. We're also on the web, savannahga.gov. Check us out on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'm Ken Slats. Thanks for watching the show, and thank you for making Savannah your home.